Hello everyone, welcome back. So, following on from the video I made about how Lestat became a vampire, I thought I'd cover a couple of the characters from the Vampire Chronicles and take you all through their journey from human to vampire. Each vampire's creation story is unique and today's individual Armand is no different from such a label. Armand is one of my favourite vampires from the Chronicles and I really think Anne Rice did such a great job with the novel as a whole, the vampire Armand, let alone Armand's character. So let's take a detailed look at how Armand became a vampire. Now before I start I just want to clear up a few things because there are some Vampire Chronicles fans who haven't read all of the books or even a single book and that's okay. If you just like the two movies and the AMC series, that's fine. But the Armand from the 1994 interview with the Vampire movie is nothing like how Armand appears in the books. Antonio Banderas did a really good job though I will say that, he put in a great performance but this is not how Armand actually looks. He was pale skinned, red haired, no older than 17 at the very most and he's had quite a journey quite a life. I've got a full video on Armand's entire life available to watch and I'll link that at the end of this video but for today I'm going to solely focus on how he became a vampire. Before he was called Armand he went by the name of Amadeo given to him by Marius who rescued him from sexual slavery. Marius rescued many boys but took to Amadeo more than any, allowing him to sleep in his bed every night. Marius planned on making Amadeo immortal but would not give him the dark gift until he experienced the most luxurious of what life had to offer as a human. Marius did not want Amadeo to have any regrets about his human life as it is an entirely different nature to what he will experience as a vampire. He wants Amadeo to learn what it's like to be with a woman and a man, however Amadeo becomes heavily attached to Marius and he hates being away from him, especially when his master leaves to attend those who must be kept and kill Anakasha. Frustrated at his master's attempts to force the pleasures of life upon him, in addition to his constant departures and disappearances, Amadeo makes the acquaintance of an Englishman by the name of Lord Harlech who serves King Henry himself. He spends several days with Harlech resulting in the Lord falling in love with him before abruptly leaving him no longer wishing to continue his acquaintance with the Lord, breaking Harlech's heart. Harlech becomes mentally unstable after Amadeo's rejection, believing that he now cannot continue life without him. When Amadeo returns after an evening at the palazzo, Lord Harlech bursts into his home and into the hall, shouting for the boy to come to him. He tells Amadeo he ripped his heart out of his chest and now they shall be together in hell. As Amadeo and Harlech fight, Harlech is egging him on with insults and talk. They stab each other, but it is Harlech who falls down dying, bleeding and unable to fight anymore. Before he dies, Harlech implies his sword was laced with poison and this is what Amadeo will die of. But before he can finish, Ricardo stabs him with a fatal blow. Amadeo is beginning to feel ill from the poison from the sword wounds. He wakes in bed with Bianca standing over him. She insists that he didn't ingest enough poison to kill him so that he has to make an effort to shake it off. Amadeo's soul or spirit drifts up into the air so that he is looking down at his body that is laying in the bed. Amadeo sees all of his past before him and even his father appears. When Amadeo questions his father, his father fades away and he envisions a bunch of priests surrounding him that try to stop Amadeo as he tries to walk forward. The priest tells Amadeo that the lesson he must take back with him is that what is important is his love for others and others love for him. Amadeo drifts back into his body and asks for some water. Everyone around him is happy because they thought he had died, however the poison has spread deeper than what Bianca believed and Amadeo is still severely weak. Marius comes to see Amadeo after he wakes from his rest and tells him that he loves him as much as he ever has and always will. Marius moves Amadeo into the bath to bathe him and heal his wounds. As he bathes Amadeo, Marius drops some of his blood into each of Amadeo's wounds and Amadeo feels the cuts closing up, the wounds healing and a pleasurable feeling overcome him. Marius removes him from the bath 
and faces Amadeo towards one of his paintings. He tells Amadeo it's the last son he will ever see as a mortal child, but that now he'll have an illumination like never before. Marius and Amadeo go to his chambers to prepare for the transformation that will turn Amadeo into a vampire. Amadeo describes the great painting on the walls of the chamber, which is a scene where men are riding on horses to their journey in Bethlehem. Marius bites into Amadeo's neck and Amadeo finds himself back with the priests in the glass city like when he was hallucinating from the poison. This time, all of the light and beauty of the city is gone. Drinking his master's blood, he begins his transition and his human body slowly begins to die. During the transition, he hallucinates again, but his father, this time, tells him to paint three paintings in a room and he must not leave until he finishes them. Marius beckons him to come back to the room and he completes his transition. After the transition, nothing seems difficult to Amadeo. That night, Amadeo and Marius go out to feed. As Amadeo takes his victim, Marius talks him through how to drink slowly and allow the heart to pump the blood to him. Amadeo enjoys his new heightened senses and when the dawn is about to break, Marius takes Amadeo down to the basement where he has a coffin-like bed for each of them to sleep the day away. Amadeo realizes the next night that his lessons of being a vampire are just beginning. Marius tells him he is actually 1500 years old. He also shares that their task is to kill the evildoers, but that they are not commissioned by God. This is when Marius takes Amadeo into the real underworld of Venice, where the thieves, courtesans and murderers are. Amadeo tries to drink quickly and with reckless abandon. Marius teaches him to allow the colours and visions that appear when drinking a human's blood to be lessons in life to Amadeo. Amadeo's transition to a vampire is now fully complete as he has experienced his physical death. So let's just talk about why his name was changed to Armand. I know some of you may be wondering how that happened. Santino, the leader of the Children of Satan cult, invades Marius' home along with his vampires. He kills the boys and sets Marius alight, apparently killing him. He survived only due to the power of the blood he had within him. Amadeo was noticed by Santino for his strength alone during his capture and was deemed a suitable candidate to join the cult. He was imprisoned in a cell for 20 weeks straight, being starved and both physically and mentally tortured until he finally submits to the will of the children of Satan's beliefs and practices. After six months of intense training and learning, Amadeo became so invested in his role that he was rewarded with leadership of his own coven based in France. Due to the strict and faithful practices that adhered to the worship of Satan, Amadeo was a name that represented God and thus Santino changed it to Armand. If you want to discover Armand's full entire life story then you can do so by clicking the card right here or why not check out the entire Vampire Chronicles playlist right underneath.